What's up, everybody? It's Coach Colton here at Columbus Martial Arts. I'm hearing a little bit of a different format video today. We're doing a kind of podcast uh, interview with uh, Mr. Rich Salino. He's actually a parent, if you're familiar with some of the students in our program, if you have students out there watching, uh, his sons, Ford and Sam, uh, both do uh, the martial arts classes here at CMA. Mr. Rich, how are you doing today? Good, thanks for having me. Awesome. Uh, before we dive in um, to everything, uh, for those that don't know, can you tell uh, us a bit about your background, who you are, what you do in the community, uh, and Young Life, the group that you work with? Sure, yeah, I'd love to. Um, again, thanks for having me. Absolutely. I'm excited to just be here with you. Uh, so I think probably the best place to start is uh, professionally. Uh, I now am um, the office manager for Columbus Speech and Hearing Center. Sure. Um, that is a company that's been around since 1978, uh, founded by... Dr. Susie Ford, who is a speech pathologist, uh, also owned by uh, my wife, Alice Ford, who's an audiologist. And so um, about three years ago, I made the move to go into practice with her for kind of a lifestyle change. Gotcha. Uh, we were kind of burning the candle at both ends in our professions yes, sir. and trying to raise our kids at the same time. So fortunately, I had the opportunity to go work with her. Prior to that, I was working at Synovus, which is a wonderful company. It was a very tough decision to leave. Um, and I'd worked there for 25 years. In wow. fact, when I started or when my boys started here, um, I was still at Synovus. Um, actually, that's not true. Um, uh, <laughs> I made, I remember having a conversation with you early yeah. on and I still had kind of my Synovus hat on when I was asking you some questions about, um, the program itself, but no, um, three years ago, I, left Sonovus and started working with my wife at Columbus Beach and Hearing Center. Gotcha. And, and, and how's that change been for you guys? It's uh, been great. Yeah, it's been a lot been better balance there. A lot better balance. I do miss the, the folks in the organization. Um, I like structure and um, and I like familiarity with things. And um, uh, Sonovus was just a wonderful experience for me. Um, but we made the right decision. Absolutely. I mean, our boys see me around more. I'm able to take into things like, um, you know, the mixed martial arts classes sure. and i love just sitting there watching them do those kind of things and so I, um it's been a good move gotcha uh actually taking a step back because that intrigues me did you always when you were younger we talked about how you were in your young life when you were younger and you wrestled a little bit back then did you already know your path as far as what you wanted to do uh vocationally or how'd you arrive at Sonovis and now where you are um, I interned with a bank Sonovis owns. It was mm. Sea Island Bank. Um, and so that was really kind of my introduction to Sonovis. Yeah. Uh, I was a finance major in college. And yeah. so I, I knew I wanted to go into that field. It's fascinating. Um, yeah. I like really kind of the power investing. I'm not on the investment side, but that stuff's very intriguing how you yeah. can let money work for you um, and help people achieve their goals through lending money um you really really can feel like you're part of a lot of companies when you're a banker and uh you feel like you're um in the midst of their business you ask them questions you get to learn their business you offer good sound financial guidance in certain situations that they may need that help and so i didn't really come to know what i wanted to do until really i had that internship mm. and i was thankful that sea island bank had that opportunity uh, so I really kind of stumbled upon Sonovus. I wasn't from Columbus, yeah. um, but um, Sonovus is headquartered here, and that's really kind of what brought me nice. to Columbus. Yeah, um, obviously working with kids, you ask them what they want to do when they grow oh, up, yeah. and you know, ninety percent of kids now want to be either uh, some kind of athlete or like a YouTuber or yeah. something like that. And I find that often, you know, it takes those kind of experiences uh, like you with your internship for them to, to kind of click and be like, oh, this is something like uh, in the real world that I really like and I can do. And like you said, finances is a, an important skill for many people to understand. Um, so that's that's very interesting. Uh, it always interests me how people get from like their youth to, you know, what they wind up doing with their life and the kind of their passion and their goal. Um, you said you were a finances major before you did the internship. Did you yeah. are, did you always know you want to do something with finances or how'd you get to that point? Um, yeah, I think it probably goes back to child development with, uh, just growing up in a family of six. Mm -hmm. Um, I had two brothers and a sister and we had an allowance and we had chores to do. And my dad really kind of ingrained in us, um, the, the, the value of hard work right. 
and uh, the reward of that hard work. And so I just remember looking at the chore list on my refrigerator <laughs> saying I yeah. can get paid a dime if I go do that um, or, you know, 50 cents if I go do this. And so I think I think that was probably more subconscious. Mm. But, you know, instilling stuff like that, you, you don't know how it impacts a child until you actually see their life kind of evolve. And so I, I would say and I've never really been asked that question. I would mm. say that probably ties back to the influence of my mother and father and, and having an allowance and chores to do and then the reward system for that. Um, you know, the, the other thing I'm, I'm kind of going off rails here, but there's another organization in Columbus that I was a part of uh, that really helped with finances. Mm -hmm. um, it was called Junior Achievement and Junior Achievement um, was one of those organizations where they really kind of try to introduce the subject matter of financial awareness to kids that oh, wow. are in elementary school. And so uh, for a period of about probably about three years, Junior Achievement was had resurfaced. It's a it's an organization that dated back to the 60s and 70s. And so I had a lot of parents or older people that were familiar with it. But then there's this gap of a couple decades right. where people didn't know about it, at least in Columbus. And so we reintroduced that into Columbus years ago. And I remember. Um, going into the elementary school and playing the stock market with kids. Yeah. Uh, I'd ask them what interests them, and they'd say MTV, and we'd say, okay, well, then you're going to buy MTV stock, which is an MTV stock, but right. a different entity. Um, and some people like McDonald's, and so some people like, um, you know, just all kinds of uh, ESPN, so you buy yeah. Disney stock. So we tried to tie everything back to, you know, a financial mm -hmm. um, perspective, and um, kids played the stock market for you know, six weeks and they got to see that if they had a hundred dollars, what it turned into. That's um, awesome. Yeah. It was really yeah. fun for that, them. That, that's definitely because, you know, I, um, I was basically raised in Columbus, did all my schooling in Columbus, went to a couple of different schools, but looking back now as an adult who pays bills and finances yeah. are a very important thing. That was something that I really could have used in my curriculum yeah. is we, you know, go over math and social studies, but no one teaches you about how to do taxes or how to, uh, you know, uh, balance a checkbook or That's keep right. your bank accounts well. And uh, I know a lot of adults out there would have appreciated that kind of uh, addition to the curriculum so that uh, they could have been prepared for when the 18 hits and they're maybe not booted out of the house right away, but they have their have those responsibilities. Uh, that's a very important skill. Yeah. Um, so with the chore board and everything, when you're younger, do you do something similar with Ford and Sam? Do they have chores? Do they have allowance? How are you doing that? Yeah, we, we do. We have a chore list uh, and there's a credit card. I'm forgetting the name of it, but um, we actually have a credit card that the oh, kids wow. can use to where it's set up really well, um, where you can assign them chores. And when they do the chores, they go onto this app and then they say, OK, I've done this chore. And then there's the, the reward system. Once gotcha. you've done these chores, then you get your allowance, but not until you do the chores. And so it's neat. Um, we really wrestled with the idea of our kids having a credit card. Um, <laughs> and, and Sam is eight years old. So yeah. we we understand how shocking that is maybe even for some of our um friends our friends but what we're doing is we're really putting um guardrails around it um we control it um yeah. you can deposit money into it or you can withdraw money at any time but um it gives them an avenue in a controlled environment to learn how life works because up to that point my kids thought that you know everything's purchased on a credit card and it's a bottomless it's an empty right. pit of just you can buy whatever you want and yeah. dad has all the money in the world. Well, that's not true. You got to pay that off. And that's so it. our kids are getting introduced to that at an early age. And our hope is that that is something that really kind of becomes a solid foundation yeah. for them. So, um, yeah, they, they do the chores and they, they don't do the chores. They don't get the allowance. Perfect. I think obviously a lot of parents at home have similar systems where, they're either rewarded financially or sometimes for younger students, they might have like a toy or something like that. But uh, later, I'd love to get that info from you so I can yeah. put the parents out there because I'm sure a lot of parents at home would love to have that kind of a system. And I think from a kid's perspective, it makes sense. They see this little piece of plastic, you hand it to them and you get the groceries or the things or whatever. And it, it doesn't click until they're older. So putting that at a young age where they understand that financial responsibility, I think that's a great system. That's really well, they, awesome. can, they can learn um you know sometimes you tell people and especially kids something one way mm -hmm. and they don't hear it but then you show them another right. way and then it resonates with them and Absolutely. so 
um, they're able to see that because if we're going out to dinner or they, you know, they want a Gatorade for before they come to class here, you know, we'll go, okay, well, why don't you buy that on your card? And so they can immediately go and understand, <laughs> well, that yeah. Gatorade costs $2. So it's and so kind of trade, yeah. they, they see that in, in the price mm -hmm. when dad pays for it, but when they see it come out of their balance on their card, mm -hmm. then they appreciate a lot more. And so right. then you kind of gravitate towards water and then, you know, you're, you're achieving what you're trying to accomplish as a parent is okay. Well, maybe I don't need Gatorade. Maybe water will do. They got a drinking fountain here. Yeah. So that kind of thing. Um, so it's, it's really fun to see that. I don't know if it's quite clicking for them yet, but we're just in the infancy of that program. Sure. And so. Yeah. I have, I have, how have you seen it with them specifically Ford and Sam? Cause I know, like I said, Sam's a bit younger. Ford's yeah. a bit older. They both have big personalities and yeah. uh, they're, uh, they're, they're a pleasure to teach by the way. Uh, who do you think right now, obviously Ford's a little bit older. Is he doing better with it? Does Sam understand Have they blown their money on something and been like, Oh snap, I didn't realize that it was going to uh, cost. Like I didn't realize $20 is $20, yeah. you know? Yeah. I think the, the thing that jumps out at me is that Ford's a giver, mm. not that Sam isn't, but he's got a very giving heart. And so the first thing he wanted to do was buy a meal for us. Right. Right. And say, I, I just, I want to do it. I want to go through that experience and I want to, I want to give back to y'all. And so, um, and then outside of that, he's really been very disciplined with what he's purchased and Amazing. same with Sam. Um, yeah. and they just, they, they are, I'm not naive to think that they understand it, but mm -hmm. they, they're much more guarded than, um, I thought they would be. And plus it's convenience too. If they ever go out with a, a parent, instead of handing them $20 that we know they're going to lose in their pocket, right. they, they just keep up with us a little bit better because they then have a wallet. Um, so, it's not for everybody. I get it. And I also think there are things that kids should do without being rewarded. Mm -hmm. There are chores that 100%. they got to do just because they're a child and yeah. they live in the house. So we don't have a reward system for everything. It's just certain things that we associate it with just to, just to try and establish that financial um, literacy. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. I agree. I think there's this baseline of, Hey, you're part of the family. The family is a unit and we mm -hmm. all pitch in and you do this just because we do so right. much, you know, the scales, definitely parents are our providers and things like that. And then at some point going above and beyond, maybe there's some kind of a reward system there. And, you know, if you're out there watching, let us know how you guys do it at home. If you have Maybe I know a lot of parents out there time it to like screen time or you guys tie it to some kind of other incentive. But I really like about this is it's kind of um, we're all about, you know, giving choices. And I think this is a great opportunity to kind of like it's almost like an onion that has two layers. Not only are you learning about, you know, pitching in and responsibility, but then also the financial side, you're also learning there, too. So it's kind of like uh, if you're doing screen time or you're doing the toy or something like that. It, the learning may stop there where this kind of has that second layer mm -hmm. of, Oh, I'm learning about like kind of opportunity and the cost of like, uh, you know, what I want to do with that. So I think that's really cool. Um, Good. yeah, shifting gears. Uh, so you, uh, talk to me a little bit about young life. It's a group that you're involved with for parents that may not be aware of what young life is. Can you talk to me a little bit about that? What is young life? What do they do? That kind of stuff. Yeah. Young life is a international, non-denominational ministry that primarily focuses on kids that are in high school. Um, there is a um, there is another component of that that's called wildlife, which is for kids that are in middle school. Okay. Uh, but it is a non-denominational outreach ministry that focuses on sharing the love of Jesus Christ. Um, I have been a part of Young Life since 1996. Um, and Young Life really kind of functions. It's headquartered in, uh, where is that? Uh, Golden, Colorado. Okay. Um, but it was founded in Texas by a guy named Jim Rayburn in the 1940s. And so each city that um, generates enough interest and support for it will have a Young Life area. And Columbus's Young Life has been around since 1982. Um, and so there was an interest group that said, hey, we want to bring Young Life to Columbus. I experienced it as a um, as a high schooler when I was living in Knoxville, Tennessee or wherever. And so then they bring it to Columbus. And so what what happens is, is that Young Life really kind of focuses in at a, a high school level. We're going to bring Young Life to Carver High School. Or we're going to bring Young Life to Columbus High School. Um, 
And so what they do is they have a staff person or several staff people that are paid by Young Life, but really the work is done by volunteers, folks that know the Lord, that yeah. want to, that feel the calling to really get out in front of high school kids and minister to them and, and introduce them to Jesus Christ. And so I did that as a volunteer from 96 um, to about 2010, a year after Ford was born. Yeah. Um, and uh, worked at Pacelli High School, uh, not worked at, volunteered at Pacelli High School and also um, Shaw High School. And so we've got it in seven high schools in Columbus, and then awesome. there are six middle schools where wildlife exists. And so it's a, it's a, it's a bedrock in our community. It's a very, very strong, positive influence for, for kids in high school and middle school. Um, and it's a it's a beautiful ministry. I didn't have high school. I didn't have young life when I was in high school. I often think, what would I be like as a high school kid if an older person and usually your volunteers are in college or older, um, if they walked into the school and said, hey, my name is Rich. I'm a young life leader. What would I say as a high school student? And the 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 the, the focus is really kind of loving kids exactly where they're at. Colton, you were in high school. You were in the band. Right. And so if I could find a way to make a connection with you, like going to watch you play, if you had some sort of audition or whatever it is, if you were in the marching band, which I know you weren't, I would I would go and watch you. I'd earn the right to be heard, which is, hey, this guy cares about me. He's a he's an older male. And, and Young Life is very specific that males do ministry to males and females to females. Gotcha. Um, but I would earn the right to be heard. Uh, first of all, you you tr I'd build trust. And then when the time was right, I'd share the love of Jesus. Why I'm doing this? Why am I a 24 year old person that's hanging around high school kids? It's not because I'm weird. Yeah. It's because, you know, I have a love for Jesus in my heart and I want to make sure that everyone has the opportunity to have that same love. So um, that's really what young life is. Um, and uh, I am no longer a volunteer leader. I'm I've been really a part of the board the structure of community leaders uh, really kind of on a board level uh, that make decisions about um, the budget for the year, what schools we go to, where we're going to go to camp, things that board members do. Gotcha. I, I think that's such a great approach. I think a lot of people, you know, have their, their initial, especially at a high school or you don't have a lot of life experience, you're predisposed to think a certain way. And so the guard yeah. is up. So you, like you said, you got to kind of earn that trust to get that guard down. And then, um, you know, you know, uh, preach the message and kind of make that connection with them. Um, thought. There you go. Uh, for uh, after the students enter into Young Life and they've heard the message of, of Jesus and they're, and they're part of that group. I remember when I was in high school at Columbus High and they'd often meet. I think they met in the gym before classes on like maybe like Wednesday or Thursday or something like that. There's a whole group and one of my friends at the time, great guy, was in there. And I just never had the means to get there, but it's always interested and intrigued. Um, what type of things are they doing in Young Life once they're a part of, of that group? Yeah. Um, so there are really two structured things that happen on a weekly basis. One is club which is typically after school um, for Shaw High School. We started at 737. You ask why 737? Because it's an odd time and kids will remember that. But we had it on, at 737 on Thursday nights. And so the club really is a place where kids come. We sing songs. Somebody's leading worship. Somebody's leading songs with a guitar and kids are singing secular songs in the beginning. And then they kind of move towards spiritual songs. Yeah. Um, but the effort is to get kids from every walk of life, um, every spiritual depth yeah. or non-depth to just get to the club. And then we'll play games. We'll do silly things that just help kind of break down walls between kids. You know, the shortest distance between two people is laughter or smile. And if Absolutely. you can get kids to do that, then they feel more comfortable being themselves. And then they naturally, as a part of being more comfortable being themselves, they're more open to hearing what it is they're, um, visiting. And so we'll sing songs, play some games, and then there will be a message uh, where a leader, i.e. that college student or somebody who's just in the workforce, uh, will share a life story and then how it applies to the Bible. So it's not just teaching scripture. It's saying, here's how this scripture impacted my life, or here's how this crazy scenario that happened in my life 
ties back to Jesus. And that's yeah. that's called the talk. Um, so they'll have that once a week and then they'll have something called campaigners, which is uh, a roll up your sleeves, in-depth Bible study. And so it will be really the kids agenda if it's done, I think, the right way, which is, hey, what are you guys struggling with in life today? Um, relationships with girls, sports, anything that that really kind of is a burden for them. Yeah. We try we tie that back to scripture and go, OK, well, let's let's talk about what Jesus would say in this situation or how Jesus would handle it. Um, and so it just can be really, really meaningful and eye opening and non threatening for kids. And so those are the two things that happen on a weekly basis. And then every twice a year, there's two camps. There's a series of summer camps that you can go to, and then there is a winter camp. The winter camp happens in the same place. It's in Jasper, Georgia, called Sharp Top Cove. It's a Young Life camp. And when I say camp, I mean, it is a resort. I mean, it is kids are treated like royalty when they go to Young Life <laughs> camp. I mean, they're, they're served by other kids um, that are volunteering for the weekend, and it's really three meals all you can eat, uh, and you're staying in cabins that are just <laughs> awesome. I mean, they're bunk beds, but they're cabins that are really, really well structured. And then you are basically catered to for the week. Uh, week in is our winter camp and then for a full week during the summer. In the, in the summer months, you either go to a camp in North Carolina. Uh, there's one of two camps there uh, or somewhere in Colorado. That's really kind of how we spread out. Um, so so really, those are campaigners, which is the Bible study club which is the weekly, you know, yeah. evening function and then camping, which is uh, what you do over the weekend or over a, a period of a week. Awesome. And those weekly things, uh, the, the club and the, the campaigners, do that, does that happen at Young Life Facility? Does it happen at their respective high schools? Where is that going yeah, on? Yeah, that's a good question because it's changing all the time. Uh, mm -hmm. When I was in high school, the campaigners and club would happen in my basement mm -hmm. of my house. And so oh. usually it's, the leader would designate, hey, I'm the I'm a I'm the I'm the leader for Shaw High School. And I either can partner up with a church and say, hey, can we have um, can we have it at your um, at your youth building uh, or do it in somebody's home? And it just is whichever is best for the school and the kids. Gotcha. Um, so that's kind of how it was when I was in high school. Um, now we have a new building with Young Life. We recently purchased what we're calling, not purchased, we built what we were calling the hub, which is Caddy Corner to Home Depot okay. on Sawiga gotcha. Drive. And so it has been what we were hoping for and more. It's a central facility where high schools, clubs, and campaigners can all happen in one place on nice. different times of okay. the week. Cool. So part of the design is for kids to feel like it's someplace of their own. I'm going to Young Life and I'm going to one place. Yeah. Um, and, and so I know that in a lot of situations or in some situations, homes are fractured. Mm -hmm. And so they just providing consistency for a kid. Hey, I will be here every week at this place. Right. And we're not kind of nomadic where we're going to be in Rich's basement this week and then we'll be in Johnny's basement the next week. It's, hey, we're going to be at this place every Thursday at 737. So that's been very very nice for kids um and um so yeah i mean i think that answers your question absolutely um and i didn't know young life had a building i, yeah. I haven't seen it uh maybe we could do some kind of tour or something yeah, someday awesome. come by there that'd be it's awesome really neat. um and then you mentioned you know uh sometimes certain individuals would come out you know build that trust make that connection for anyone that might be watching now and wants to join young life what's the best way to do that how do they get involved yeah. Um, so I think the best thing would be is to call the Young Life office, which I don't have that memorized, but you can look that we'll up. Put it on the screen. Here. Yeah, we will. <laughs> here. Um, and so, yeah, you can call the Young Life office. And I think the conversation probably would be like this. Hey, my son or daughter is in high school or middle school and they're at this school. Do you currently have a Young Life program at that school? Because we really kind of designate them to schools. And the answer would be yes or no. It, but it doesn't stop there. It's no, but, you know, here are some other schools and where they're having it. Your child is welcome to come yeah. um, because uh, that has happened in the past where we've kind of actually married two schools together and had a you know, club where it's between two schools. Or we have kids that just go to a different school, but go to, um, I'm sorry, are going to school at Columbus High, but may come to the Shaw Club. And that's OK. I mean, it's really uh, young life's designed to be for all kids everywhere. Yeah. And so 
I would call the Young Life office and just say, hey, my child is in middle school, high school, and do you have a club there now? And if so, where do you meet? Gotcha. Um, and what times and what days? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so I know uh, for the being middle school and high school, Sam might be a little, a little young for that, but mm -hmm. is Ford currently involved in Young Life? Yeah, Ford's currently involved in Wildlife. Okay. Um, in fact, we're having our first Wildlife club which is going to be in all city which means all the schools get together awesome. that have wildlife and we're meeting at the hub that's gotcha. a lot of vernacular specific to young life but that's yeah. what the kids need that sometimes they need yeah. that jargon that vernacular to say hey that uh, that yeah. intrigues me we're going uh, to the hub absolutely yeah. yeah you can thank lauren johnson who is his the she is the area director for young life um she's the one that's paid there's a staff of five people she gotcha. coined at the hub but She's very in touch with kids and, yeah. and what they say. But yeah, so there's a Young Life or I'm sorry, Wildlife tonight at the Hub. And I'm not sure what time it starts. It's probably six. But the facility is wonderful. I would encourage any of y'all um, to drive out there almost any night of the week. We'll have the lights on, a basketball goal. Um, sure. We're building a, an outdoor amphitheater for kids. Wow. Um, we're trying to make it a place that really, really is uh, special for them. So. Yeah. Yeah, and if I can get by there, I'm, I might do some recording and plug it in the video so they can kind of see some yeah. of the stuff you're talking about. Oh, it's great. But, yeah. Yeah, I was just thinking back. I chuckled a second ago because I remember Ford was in class, I believe it was last night, and he had earned a stripe on his belt. Oh, I saw this. And yeah. it was just the kid vernacular is always changing. Youth always has something different. And the best coach for that is Coach Dom, I think, because he's a little bit younger. He yeah. knows. But I, I, <laughs> I put the stripe on Ford's belt, and he goes, I think he says, like, my belt's dripping which I think is like so funny that uh, now I get drip is the thing. It means like stylish or like yeah. swag or whatever. Uh, but yeah, you need those kind of things to make that connection. And uh, you know, even with martial arts, it's the same thing. It's like you said, consistency. We see a lot of, a lot of different family dynamics, sometimes fractured homes and between just making that connection mm -hmm. and having that consistency, that is so powerful. Uh, and you can see a huge change in students if you just have those first two ingredients. Yeah. It's, 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 it's really crazy. I think uh, it depends yeah. on the heart of the leader or the yeah. employee of, you know, um, Young Life or Mixed Martial Arts. It really does because you can say drip. <laughs> right. And, and say, I'm going to I'm going to get to know this kid and I'm going to learn the vernacular. But if your heart's not right, um, then there will be absolutely no connection. Kids are intelligent. Right? right. And so they pick up on what your intent is very quickly. Um, they, they're not really fooled by yeah. things that I think adults can get lured into. And so um, if your heart's not in it or you your intentions are foul, yeah. then you'll lose connection with Poisons the well. You will. Absolutely. Yeah. And so. Um, I think you could say drip back to Ford and he would go, you know, what coach Colton said to me today, you know, because <laughs> right. there's a, there's a heart connection. There, Absolutely. Right? And so um, you're right. You, the vernacular is funny, but you got to have the heart for it too. 100%. And, and, and the crew here does an outstanding job of that. I mean, when Thank we you. ran into you at the grocery store, yeah. we were all giddy. Yeah, right? yeah, I mean, yeah. So, I mean, we, we just couldn't, the scenario was we were at public shopping and coach Colton was getting something for, a function he was going to and Sam or Ford uh, noticed him. And we said, let's do a surprise attack and see if coach Colton does one of his moves back on the kids in the grocery yeah. store. I think they were thoroughly disappointed because <laughs> Sam, the younger one kind of attacked me. So I feel this kind of this bear hug come around my waist. And you know, if there was like a big, like gruff guy, like, okay, maybe I might jump in attack mode, but my initial instinct wasn't, Hey, there's a kid hugging me. I'm going to like karate chop him or something. So I turned around just kind of confused and, I could see like this expectant look yeah. of, am I going to get thrown or something? Cause yeah. I think that's what they wanted, but it's very, very, uh, very funny. They did. They wanted to be thrown into the cereal box. Uh, <laughs> yeah. next time, next time. Um, I wanted to go back really quick. You mentioned that when you were in high school, you didn't experience long life, but you often thought about, you know, what happened if you had had that yeah. in your life. And later on you acted as a volunteer and you volunteered for quite a long time. Um, that and now, from your perspective, what are the common problems that youth are facing and what can we do as parents, as community leaders, what can we do to really, you know, help students with those problems? Are you seeing, you know, uh, technology? Are you seeing it with school? Are you seeing it with you know, family structure, uh, bullying, uh, girls and relationships? What type of problems are you seeing right now really common and what advice would you have? 
Oh, man. I, Might be a loaded question. There's a lot to unpack there. I'm trying not to be churchy uh, with the response, but the first thing that pops in my mind is kids, everyone wants to feel loved. Mm. They, they want to feel like somebody loves them. And, and I think kids know their parents love them, but, you know, kids are desperate for acceptance. Um, yeah. And that can be a never-ending uh, journey for people. You know, if they're chasing love, in the wrong places they they're just never going to find it and that can be not not lo love may be a strong word as i continue to talk but if they're if they're looking for acceptance in sports or athletics yeah. or grades or friendships they're going to be disappointed at some point mm -hmm. right and some are more easy to identify drugs are going to be you're going to lead to disappointment pretty yeah. quick but some may be if i put if i'm the smartest kid in the school you know that can lead you down an unhealthy place too, right? Yep. Unless you're grounded in something. And so I think it's plainly just the love of Christ. Yep. It's my opinion. Um, but I think kids want to be accepted. They want to feel love. They want that security that's associated with that. And so they're no different than what I was um, when I was in high school. I, I was searching. I can look back and think about uh, you know, am I going to get acceptance because I'm dating this girl or dating that girl or because I'm playing soccer or doing whatever I was doing? And it's just this never ending battle. Um, and I think the distractions today are um, much more challenging for kids than um, than what I was dealing with. And I think the distraction is social media. You yeah. try and get acceptance by putting on the best face that you can have in social media. Um, and that's just it's just it's a rat race. Sure. And so if you can get the kids to be in into something that will prove to be a life changing um, thing like young life, then I mean, I think it's it sets them apart. The great thing is you see that immediately in young life um, because those kids then want to turn around and give back. They, yeah. they see it and they go, I've, I've never experienced this. I want to give back. And there is an avenue in young life to do that. I mean, you can become a leader. Yeah. Um, for uh, you can be a high school student and be a leader for the middle school kids, right? Awesome. So I'm a I'm a at the same time I'm a young life kid as a high school student. I'm also a young life leader for the middle school. Awesome. And so, you know, when kids get back, then they realize what it means to sacrifice and what it means to serve others. And those are just great foundational traits for anyone to have. And you know, I mean, Columbus Martial Arts is doing the same thing. What's your very leadership? similar? Yeah, with your it's leadership program. I mean, we have a session from 9 to 11 this saturday that ford's going to That's right, right where he wants to you know become a teacher or an instructor junior instructor is the right term you know and there's some push pull with kids sometimes like you know I, um i don't know if i'm ready for that um but you never know unless you you push them a little bit um in hopes that they kind of realize you know it takes a lot of time for coach colton and dom and others to yeah. be here and do this and so you don't know that unless you walk in their shoes and I, the whole time you're saying talking there, I just saw so I was listening to so much overlap. First, about the doubling back on like the love and acceptance, and love can be a strong word, but it's love. You know, you're yeah. absolutely right. And I see, you know, I just talked to a parent last week, and uh, I think they were trying out for our junior league program, or maybe they were moving from basic to core, but they were moving into one of Coach Dom's classes. And I sit down with them after the class and we deal with a lot of different family dynamics, as I'm sure Young Life does. And this happens to be a fractured family, single parent home. Uh, grandma is involved a lot, it's just mom and grandma. And the kid doesn't have dad in life and stuff, which is always a hurdle. And um, I was talking to the grandma about the class and she goes, oh my gosh, she loved it. He absolutely loved it. He coached Tom. This is his favorite coach. Yeah. And I said, oh, I didn't know you had coached Tom before. That's one thing I want to check on is, you know, sometimes they get really attached to one instructor and moving them. That relationship is very important. And she goes, no, like, I, I think it's because, you know, dad's not around. And I asked him how to coach Tom goes. And grandma said, he told me, uh, the kid said, do you know when I thought coach Tom was my favorite coach? My grandma asked when. He said, when he tied my belt when I came to class. Because yeah. they're just looking for that connection right yep. away it's so powerful you it know is. so that acceptance is so so important and then going to ford you mentioned how one of the first things that ford did was he wanted to give back and give you guys a meal before right so i can see those connections being made and how once you have that connection 
you want to kind of go and now he wants to be an instructor and it's just that cycle of giving it's kind of like a snowball effect it just keeps going and once you have that and you make that connection and by the way i don't think obviously you've been talking about a lot about jesus and stuff i'm a christian too and uh, i i've gone through that but once you have that connection uh with jesus and you feel how that love feels and you make that connection you want everyone else to feel that connection and feel what it feels like too so um just con agree 110 yeah. percent everything you said so much overlap there it's it's crazy what's your um what's your thought as a parent on social media do you let ford and sam on there is is it guarded do you have parent locks on is it absolutely not what's your what's your thought on that um they are not on social media i mean um uh, ford turns 13 today oh wow that's great happy birthday yeah 9909 that was his birthday um and so no he he is not on social media. Uh, I don't know if we're ready for that. It's it's really kind of up to each family. So I don't yeah. want anyone to think that be, if they are and they're younger than 13 or they're older than 13, that um, it's wrong. It's just I don't know. It's just not right for us yet. Mm -hmm. um, I don't I think they're each kid is different. Right. And do you yeah. have the maturity to handle that? I, you know, I'm not on social media because I, I just I could find myself wasting a lot of time or spending a lot of time on it um, if I was. And so um, it's just to each his own, but no, neither of them are on. Good, good. Yeah, yeah I, I, obviously. Every... So they won't see this, right? This <laughs> yeah, so go on social media. So they won't see it necessarily. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, I guess it's on YouTube. I'm not sure if that counts social media, but mm. yeah, we didn't have it growing up. Um, I think maybe I got Facebook when I was like 17 or 18. Didn't particularly really like it. I think once I became an adult and started working, I used it more for work than oh, anything. Oh, it can be a good tool. Because yeah. everyone's connected on there now. But yeah, I definitely, that makes sense. Maturity plays a big factor and there's constantly new things coming out. The latest thing I think has been TikTok, which is just like you scroll, you scroll, you scroll, and you never know what's going to pop up. Could be good, could be bad. It's pretty drip. Yeah. <laughs> I've had parents talking to me about that or uh, or Coach Monica, she does a lot of our social media posting and I'll say, hey, I saw you do like the uh, uh, the jelly bean thing. Uh, we did like these different flavored jelly beans and stuff. And you guys are on TikTok and I didn't realize how many kids have the cell phone, have the social media and stuff. And um, it's kind of just Pandora's box. You never yeah, know what's is. in there. So, uh, you know, if they're mature enough to understand, see what's going on, understand this is right, this is wrong, how how uh, they're supposed to feel about it, then I think they're good. But younger students, students that might not understand, definitely yeah, we watch that. We struggle with that decision. Uh, well, not really with the social media. We struggle with the phone decision. I'm, I don't know if you've noticed Ford has come in with a phone. Mm. He has a phone now, um, and it's been really out of a need for us to want to make sure that he we know where he is. Um, there's, you know, he's playing tennis and doing a couple other things and um, spending the night with friends, and we just want to check on him, which is True. very different because we didn't have that when we were in high school. You call their and, parent, and, so, and if you're at their home, you yeah, have to use the house Sometimes phone. I scratch yeah. my head and go, how did my parents know where I was? Well, Absolutely. they did, right? I mean, they, they managed. And so, but, but he does have a phone, and there's a difference. I think that often I associate anyone who has a phone has social media. And so if they're looking at their phone, they're looking at social media. That's not true as a, as a 13 year old, I, right. I just assume that. And that's, that's not a fair assumption. Um, so uh, I don't want you to call me out if you see Ford walking <laughs> in with a phone. No, uh, no, definitely not. It's definitely a thing. Uh, I, as a martial arts instructor, I don't care if they're on social media or not. I'm just interested on the parent aspect. Cause I do think it's every parent's decision. Yeah. I was just, it's crazy. Like parents will tell me like, okay, uh, things that happen outside the academy because they want me to maybe talk or coach or, or, or talk well, to Well, you asked for that too. Absolutely. And um, something happened recently where two of our students that weren't in the same class, but had a mutual friend, they were on a video game together. And through this particular video game, you could talk to one another. Mm -hmm. And on this game, one of the students used particularly foul language, or at least that's what the other student is claiming. And that mom came to me saying, hey, this other student is like saying this. And a day I'm saying, yeah, is using foul language bad? Absolutely. If I heard it in the academy, would I nip it right away? A hundred percent. But I'm not there. It's he said, she said, right. that's not my job to do that. That's what you guys are for. It's in the home. It's the parents. I'm going to leave that up to you guys. If something's going on with your student, 
I'll take care of it. I'll tell the other parent, I'll let them know what's going on, but I'm not going to say, hey, you should tan his hide because I heard from this other kid that he said this. It's very complicated. It is. It is these things are things that I think we're seeing for the first time in, like, in humanity's history. Parents have never had to navigate these kind of things before. I think like my tail end of high school, we had a speaker on like talking about cyberbullying. And I'm thinking, cyberbullying? There's no such thing as cyberbullying. I mean, it's just... Yeah, it's, it's nonsense. Face to face, but right? yeah, it's face to face. And you know, at Columbus, obviously, you get in a fight, they kick you out. Um, so you'd maybe have words with somebody, but that was about the extent of it. But nowadays, uh, looking as a coach, what kids are going through, yeah, kids are mean to each other on social media all the time. I see like posts and messages and things, and it's just, uh, it's, it's, it's a whole new area of things to navigate for sure. Yeah. Um, let's see here. Well, I think that uh, while you're looking at yeah. that, I think that, you know, uh, you, you had mentioned bullying. I love what y'all are doing um, to really kind of take a stand against that. That's that's there's there's no room or space for that anywhere. Yeah. And if I've got a hot button, it's that. Um, mm. And I love, you know, the fact that is it next weekend? There's an anti-bullying seminar. Yes, right? sir. Yeah, it's going to be uh, Saturday, September 17th. You guys are watching it and the day hasn't passed yet. It'll be from 10 to 12. As long as you're five years or older, you can come. We just need a parent to sign a safety waiver. We're going to talk about uh, what to do in different self-defense scenario, scenarios, how to protect yourself, but also kind of best practices, how to hopefully de-escalate it before it turns physical and should it turn physical, how to keep yourself safe and hopefully keep them safe too. If it's two school-aged children, uh, we really have a system that's pretty good at not inflicting serious damage and I've had one or two kids get in a fight and maybe they get have to get ISS because that's what's in the books. But the other kid winds up getting a more severe punishment because we try not to kick and punch and take things too far. We just want to yeah. keep our kids safe, you know. Well, I think it's great. Um, Ford and Sam attended. I don't know if it was the last one or if it was the one prior to and invited a couple of friends to go to that. And it's just something that, you know, is going to exist, whether you are the recipient of bullying or your friend is. Um, and so just knowing what to do or having some somewhere to kind of reach back and in a memory bank and go, wait a minute, I, I've attended. So I, I know what to do. And if they take away one piece of it, it's better than it being a completely foreign yeah. experience for them. And so um, I, I, I just really like the fact that you guys are trying to attack that head on, which is part of the reason why we joined. You know, I was going to ask you about that a little bit, thinking about Ford and Sam's personality. If someone was trying to bully them, like if, Ford caught someone bullying Sam. I know that he would like definitely step in and stand up for him and one of his friends. And Sam's Sam's pretty rambunctious too. He's, yeah. He gets uh, he, he's not afraid to wrestle or yeah. you know stand up for himself. Have they experienced bullying? Or uh, you said that was the initial kind of what that guy started. Tell me about no, that. No, it's just bit. one of the things that I'm I just think about a lot as a parent. Yeah. I mean, anytime I read about those situations, it just really kind of breaks my heart. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I think Ford has experienced, I wouldn't call it bullying. Maybe it's rough play. Yeah. Uh, and I remember one time Ford was uh, in the midst of all that and some kid just was relentless. And the funny thing is that Sam's the one that stepped in. <laughs> and uh, and we all thought it was funny. Not that Ford needed Sam to, but, yeah. you know, they're brothers and they love each other. Absolutely. And, you know, um, it's just uh, if, if one of them sees another in distress, then they, they both jump in. And so it's not. Um, it's as a parent, you like it, yeah. um, but you always are trying to navigate the right way of handling that. What would we do? And, and one of those constant questions that my kids had before we joined MMA, MMA uh, Columbus Martial Arts was, Dad, what if Johnny punches me? Mm. What do I do? You know, and so yeah. you can as a parent, you're you're in the moment and you're going, well, what do you do? Do you teach the kid to stick up for himself? Do you teach the kid to tuck tail and run? And tough. what what Columbus Martial Arts does is that they they really kind of give you a framework to kind of handle that. Right. I mean, it's you know, you, you tell them to stop and then you give them another opportunity. Right. I mean, just the instruction that you provide to that gives the kids a framework to go. All right. I, I, I don't want to be the one that is the aggressor, but I'm, right. I'm going to take a stand and I'm not going to go for this. Right. And so that structure and framework is good for the kids because when you are emotionally charged, you know, you need to be able to retreat back to some sort of foundation. And, and that does it. This does that. Well, thank you for those kind words. I kind of much how you wish you had 
uh, the experience of young life when you're younger. Same thing with me with martial arts. I started when I was 12 or 13, yeah. but about that time, I've been tall since that age. I think sixth, seventh grade, I've been six five, right? So at that point, there wasn't a lot of bullies coming my way, but in elementary school, littered with it. I yeah. went to a lot of different schools. I went to speech therapy when I was younger. I kind of had like the Elmer Fudd thing where all my R's sound like W's. So it's right. like Wabbit season and that kind of stuff. And I'd get teased a lot by it. And I would get in fights constantly and uh, definitely not saying to get in fights constantly. I'd handle it the completely wrong way. And um, going back to the technology, I think back then I was a little lucky that everyone didn't have cell phones because I can remember the principal trying to call my dad at home and him being at work and not having a cell phone, the house phone would ring. And I think to myself, oh, he's not going to yeah. hear about this for That's a right. while, you, got you know, some time. got some time to kind of explain myself or maybe it doesn't get out at all. And um, and just it, 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 like you said, it's a completely foreign situation, you know, and you get emotionally charged. I remember second grade, first week at a new school playground, classic kind of time. Kids were making fun of the way I was talking. And they're standing on a balance beam, which was a dumb move for them because I'm emotionally charged. I see these two guys making fun of me on a balance beam. I'm going to push them off the balance right. beam. So I shove them. Dumb decision for me because there's two of them and one of me. So instantly it's a two on one thing and I'm, I'm getting uh, punched and stuff like that. And ultimately we, we all go to detention for like a week. Principal calls all of our parents. We get a ton of trouble and all just from my like one boneheaded, emotionally charged kind of thing where I could have just ignored right. it they had no intent they weren't gonna come towards me or try and hit me or anything like that I just handled it the completely wrong way so uh had i had something like this i think i could have handled it a lot better and been a lot more you know mature about the business there but well you, you, know. you guys um do something else that i think is wonderful you have the word of the month right and so it's one of these it's just another tool or an arrow in their quiver to where they can they can pull back that knowledge when they get in a situation like you just described and, and the word this month is self-confidence absolutely and so a kid with more self-confidence again we're, we're analyzing something that happened years ago yeah. but a kid that had some self-confidence would have gone you know what i could probably handle both of these kids by yeah. doing this move or that move right i mean they, they're standing in a position where i can yeah. do that and i've got self-confidence to know that i don't need to get in a fight in order to resolve the issue I can verbally talk to them in a calm way and say, guys, cut it out. I'm not going to take it, you know? Yeah. And so that's great because um, it's just, it's not the action. It's the, oh, Coach Colton talked to me about self-confidence. And we had this homework assignment this month to where I can earn a star if I um, exercise self-confidence yeah. five different ways over the month. And so you, you're hitting it from a couple different angles, which you need that. I mean, that's the same way with Young Life. You can share a scripture with them 15 times this way, but, Maybe you share it this way or you show them this way through an act of kindness and then it clicks. Right. And so I, I admire you all for trying to do it from a textbook environment as well as a physical environment. So um, kudos for you guys in doing that. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I don't take too much time. I think this we're a little over already. Yeah, we're Are having we, a great combo. Uh, yeah, we're going to wrap it up my, here. My wife and saying yeah. we got 15 minutes and I was going, that's going to be a long time. She said, y'all are going to blow through that. Oh, yeah. It was, <laughs> I, I was like, after I started writing questions and things I want to talk to you about, I was like, man, I'm not sure if I can fit this all in a half hour because there's really a lot of things I want to pick your brain about, about your background and young life and Ford and Sam and just everything. I was like, man, I want to dive yeah. deep in this conversation. And uh, I thank you for your time coming oh, yeah. out today, talking to me. Um, we're going to get all that information for the Young Lifeline. So anyone interested at home, you guys can give that a call and maybe we'll get by there and get some footage we can plug in of the uh, of the hub, yeah. uh, as as the kids say. But uh, yeah, and then also you. the credit card. Yes, credit card as well. I'll get that info from you and we'll probably put that down in the link. You can probably go apply for it online or something like that. But a uh, great tool there to teach some financial responsibility. My uh, early 20s, late teens, I could have definitely used a lot more financial responsibility. So uh, thank you. Thank you, Rich, for your time. Thanks for oh, yeah. coming on. Thanks uh, for having me. Hopefully absolutely. it was good. Yeah, amazing. Thank you. See you. See you.